Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Well, I got another, another challenge today from uh, the Colors magazine and they asked me if I can make weapons out of trash. And I think I can. So I hit the local forest and tried to find a place where there's still some trash. So I found this broken off piece of broom handle. I found some cat food cans. I found this discarded shredded jeans. Took me some time, but I found some usable string. I think that's a clothes line. That's a valuable find. You know, some extra hot crust chili. Probably too hot for whoever bought it. Anyway, the date is, is uh, exceeded. But it, it's gonna work for us. I found this old spray bottle. I'd say there was homemade perfume in it. I found something that people really shouldn't throw in the trash. Batteries. A whole bunch of them. I found a clothes pin in good condition. And I did find these used garden rubber gloves. Quite snappy and pretty clean. Let's see if we can weaponize that. Okay, so first we're gonna make homemade pepper spray from the chili. You can also use fresh chili, just make sure it's very hot. And uh, we're also gonna use the spray container for that. And what else do we need? Well, we need a mortar. And uh, we need something to filter the liquid. We need a little bit of oil, any type. I think this is uh, linseed oil, but you can take baby oil, anything. And alcohol. And I use the only non-drinkable alcohol I have in the house, which is very cheap cleaning alcohol. And also what you need is a few containers of any kind, glasses, whatever. And for your own protection, because this is a very nasty liquid, you should wear glasses. And I recommend gloves. You don't have to use those from the trash, though. <laughs> Okay, now that I'm properly protected, so we start by taking the chili and putting a good amount of it into the mortar. Like this. Mm. Next, we take the alcohol and pour it in so that there's about half an inch of liquid on top of the surface of the chili powder. Now we take the pestle and grind away. You can immediately see that the color of the alcohol is turning a very, very vicious red. And you do that for about 10 minutes. So now we take a little bit of the oil and pour it in, just like this. The alcohol and the oil will make sure that it's not deteriorating as quickly and also it makes sure that the attacker can't easily clean it off. So it's gonna sting to his skin and his eyes. Very painful. The smell is already nasty. Okay, grind on for a little bit. So now we have to filter the particles out of it. So we pour it in like this. And then we can try to squeeze out the whole thing a little bit like this. And what is left now is a very, very aggressive liquid. Oh, the smell alone is nasty. And um, it's ready for using it. So now we put it in the bottle and I will test it and I will do that with closed eyes and very, very carefully. Oh. Really, really nasty. It burns in the nose. And it's, I really don't want to get this in my eyes. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. So, weapon number one is finished. Okay, so next 
we're going to do a set of bolas from the cat food cans and we're going to use the clothes line for it and the battery now if you don't want to use batteries which I actually recommend you can use just stones any kind of stone and we also need the jeans and as tools a drill some pliers scissor and also we're going to need some um, pieces of wood any type doesn't matter some duct tape so we start by drilling a hole in through the middle of the cat foot can now take a piece of wood and drill a hole through the middle of it gosh I should have finished this with the pepper spray not starting it <coughs> First we cut the clothes line into three pieces that are about equal in length. Put it through the hole of the can, okay, like this, and then through the piece of wood, like this, and then we make a nice secure knot into it. And the second one to make it thicker. So now what you see is that when I pull on this, the knot presses against the piece of wood and the piece of wood presses against the tin can. It's not gonna rip out that fast. Okay, now we're gonna pull it tight and make another knot on the side outside of the can. Try to make the knot as close to the hole as possible. Like this. Now I take the batteries and again I recommend using stones or something else because there is nasty liquid in the batteries and you don't want to spill that in your garden, right? Just for the show I'm taking batteries. So that's now full with batteries and real heavy. Now we take the jeans and what we do is, we cut out a patch from the jeans. Now we put the jeans patch over the can and then we take the tape and secure it. So now we take some more tape and put it around so now we have a very heavy and very very solid little flail that is a weapon in itself so that's let's do the same with the other two cans so then you take the three pieces of string and you make a knot real real solid like this so this is it and you can use this in various ways for example like a fla flail let me show it so I'm no expert in throwing bolas but it works like this in principle okay so next we want to use the clothes pin the broom handle and the gloves to make a crossbow. The idea is that you put the ammo against the end of the um, broom handle and then use the clothes pin as a trigger by shifting the ammo over the edge, like this. So first we turn the discarded gloves into slingshot bands and we do that by tying a string around both ends. We do that with the four fingers and we leave the thumb out just the tips of the four fingers. Make sure there's not much air trapped inside the glove. Okay, so I tied it loosely around it and now we're gonna move it to the very end of the glove because we wanna use as much rubber as possible and then we tie it like this so it can't slip out. Okay, 
and then we simply tie a knot in the end, like this. See here. And we do the same with the tips of the fingers, like here. And now what we have is a slingshot band. So I finalized the weapon for you, it's easy to explain. You see I simply use two screws to attach a piece of wood underneath the end, which I filed into shape a little bit. And uh, I took a piece of string and a nail to secure the clothes pin. And the bands are simply held in place with a little bit of office rubber. You can also use string or tape for that. Um, just the knots hold it back, hold them back. And I use a normal pouch cut from a piece of leather or textile. Just make sure it has a big center hole. Okay, now to test it, we'll fire a hazelnut. And we put it behind the pouch here. And make sure everything is nicely centered. Like this. And then we can crack the hazelnut by firing it against the wall. Like this. Good nutcracker. So now we change to a stone or in this case a 20 millimeter steel ball. Let's find out if it can crack a bottle. Sure. As always a little bonus. A new slingshot that I made. It's made from semi-fossilized oak. Really nice. It's about 1700 years old oak and uh, it has a multiplex core and an even more dramatically curved more hammer handle. This is a short video clip for my friend Brendan from California. Brendan wants to shoot grapes with a slingshot uh, to break a record. And um, I tried to find the best way how to do that. So here we got some grapes that are really soft. I mean, they're not really fresh anymore. The key is you have to cut the rubber right, and I did that. You have to use a very large pouch and um, put the grape in here and the pouch around. And then it is important that you hold the pouch, not the grape, because otherwise you will simply squeeze all the juice out of the grape and it's messy. And then you draw out like this. So this is left. The grape flies at about, I'd say, 80 meters per second. So I guess if you draw out in full, you can probably throw it 300 or 350 meters. Probably more than needed. Anyway, I'll send the slingshot to Brandon next week. Hope that it works out. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you liked it. Thanks and bye-bye.